Hey everybody, this one is called uh, Government Official Equals Roman Cult. First of all, I'm not a liar. Well, I meant a lawyer. No, I meant a liar. You should never take my word for anything. You should always do your own research. I've provided references to aid you in your research, but I don't know everything and I'm open to any ideas. Uh, there's four types of people you'll meet in your life. There's the people who try to wake up the slaves. There's the slave masters. There's the people who have no idea they're slaves. And there's the people who like being slaves. Which one are you? Do you really know for sure? Are you who you think you are? If you can see through the illusion, then you are the solution. If you can see through the illusion, you'll never be the same. If the people do not know their basic rights and freedoms, how can they know when or if their rights and freedoms are being infringed? Never forget, the men who started this country were marijuana-growing, whiskey-drinking, tax-evading rebels who left their beds at night to shoot at the cops. All tyranny needs to gain a foothold is for people of good conscience to remain silent. Government is not reason, it is not eloquence, it is force. Like fire, it is a dangerous servant and a fearful manner. They don't, these people are order followers. They just do what they're told. That doesn't have to have a reason. Doesn't, it's force, that's all it is. It's a dangerous servant and a fearful master. Don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel. Don't forget to follow me on Steemit at Sovereignty International. Don't forget to like this video. On YouTube, don't forget to click the bell next to the subscribe button so you're notified where there's a new upload. And on Steemit, don't forget to vote and make your comments. There's the front page of my channel. Uh, the subscribe button's already been clicked. The bell has not been clicked. The arrow's pointing at the bell. And what you do is uh, you click on the bell and uh, you'll have a pop-up come up sometimes. Uh, but you'll be notified of uploads. This is Article 13 of the Libra Code. Military jurisdictions of two kinds. First, that which is conferred or defined by statute. Second, that which is derived by the common law of war. Military offenses under the statute law must be tried in a manner therein directed, but military offenses which do not come within the statutes must be tried and punished under the common law of war. The character of the courts which exercise these jurisdictions depends upon the local laws of each particular country. In the armies of the United States, the first is exercised by court-martial. While cases do not come within the rules and articles of war, the jurisdiction conferred by statute on court-martial are tried by military commissions. They're all military commissions. All statutes are in support of the martial law. All statutes apply to subjects only. There's two kinds of court proceedings, court-martials and military commissions. The only Article Three courts are set up by we the people. Where are controversies of such a character as to require the exercise of the judicial power defined by Article Three jurisdiction thereof can be conferred only on courts established in virtue of that article. Congress is without power to vest that judicial power in any other judicial tribunal or, of course, in an executive officer or administrative or executive board since they are incapable of receiving it. So, again, the only Article Three courts are ones that are set up by we the people. These legislative courts are incapable of receiving Article Three authority. It is noted as significant that the act constituting the court dispense with trial by jury, a provision which is distinctly upheld in spite of the Seventh Amendment in Elrath versus United States with respect to the status of the court. The opinion concludes, a duty to give decisions which are advisory only and so without force as judicial judgments may be laid on a legislative court but not on a constitutional court established under Article 3. So, again, all legislative courts give advisory decisions only. Because the grand jury is an institution separate from the courts over whose functioning the courts do not preside, we think it clear that as a general matter, at least, no such supervisory judicial authority exists. A grand jury operates completely on its own. Rooted in long centuries of Anglo-American history, Frank, uh, um, the grand jury is mentioned in the Bill of Rights, but not in the body of the Constitution. It has not been textually assigned, therefore, to any of the branches described in the first three articles. It is a constitutional fixture in its own right. And that's actually, um, what's his name? 
Scalia that wrote this decision. In fact, the whole theory of its function is that it belongs to no branch or inst of the institutional government serving as a kind of buffer or referee between the government and the people. Recognizing this tradition of independence, we've said that the Fifth Amendment's constitutional guarantee presupposes an investigative body acting independently of either prosecuting attorney or judge. The grand jury. Legislative courts are not judicial. Legislative courts are not Article III courts. Legislative courts give advisory decisions only that do not have the force of law. Executive, administrative, executive board, legislative courts are incapable of receiving authority to be an Article III court. Only an Article III court has the force of law. All of these are government employees. So again, it's tied into the Roman cult. Oh, look at that. There is a bunch of government employees and the Roman cult. The judge works for the state. The prosecutor works for the state. The police or witness works for the state. The vast majority of the disputes that the police initiate on behalf of their employer are also adjudicated by their employer, where the plaintiff, the judge, the antagonist, the police, and the only witness, also the police, all represent the same party. And since no corpus delecti, mens rea, or ex reus can be produced, doesn't technically qualify to be heard according to its own laws. The state, therefore, is indistinguishable from a criminal cartel. It's called official oppression in Texas. Oh, look at that. Another kangaroo court. We can't even begin to time, count the number of times judges, lawyers, and statesmen have said there isn't any common law anymore. It's been replaced by statutes. They would be more truthful if they said there isn't any common law anymore. It's been replaced by martial law. And that's taken from the book called The Non-Ratification of the 14th Amendment by Judge A.H. Ellett of the Utah Supreme Court related to the case Diet versus Turner. Martial law supersedes and replaces common law. This is taken from the causes and necessities for the taking up arms in 1775. Statutes have been passed extending courts of admiralty and vice admiralty far beyond their ancient limits for depriving us the accustomed and inestimable privilege of trial by jury in cases affecting both life and property to supersede the course of common law instead thereof to publish the or and, and order the use and exercise of the law marshal. We saw the misery to which such despotism would reduce us. That's dictatorship, folks. That's exactly they understood. Why can't people today figure it out? There's no common law offenses against the United States, only those acts which Congress has forbidden with penalties for disobedience of its command or crimes. Under Texas law, no act or omission is a crime unless made so by statute. The legislature may create an offense and in the same enactment provide exceptions to its application. Again, it's all martial law. It's military dictatorship, folks. Arizona's the same, okay? It's, it's all... I mean, you could probably find these kinds of statutes in every state in the Union because of the bankruptcy. All common law offenses or affirmative defenses are abolished. No conduct or omission constitutes an offense or an affirmative defense unless it is an offense or an affirmative defense under this title or under another statute or ordinance. So that's why they want to do martial law, because it gets rid of their nasty little common law problem, because at common law, they'd all be put to death for doing what they're doing. And so um, they, they uh, see, because under martial law, it's really no law at all. There's court cases that talk about that. There's under martial law, there's no law at all. And so then they have to specify. That's where you get civil law. Because now they go and start writing millions, literally millions of codes, rules, and regulations. And if you don't know them all, then they sell you into slavery. NSA takes care of the spying, CIA takes care of the drug trade, FBI takes care of the terror attacks and false flags, and Homeland Security takes care of the rest. The CIA owns everybody of any significance in the major media. We'll know our disinformation program is complete when everything the American public believes is false. Deception is a state of mind and the mind of the state. Gee, that sounds like Satanism. Deception? Lies? That's all Satanism, folks. The Lieber Code is instructions for the government of the armies of the United States in the field by Francis Lieber, originally issued as General Orders Number 100, Adjutant General's Office in 1863, um, and it's available um, at the U.S. Government Printing Office. 
Article 1 of the Labor Code. Martial law is the immediate and direct effect and consequence of occupation or conquest. The presence of a hostile army proclaims its martial law. They don't have to make a proclamation. Article 2 of the Lieber Code. Martial law does not cease during the hostile occupation except by special proclamation ordered by the Commander-in-Chief or by special mention in the Treaty of Peace. Well, in Texas' case, there's been no Treaty of Peace and there's been no proclamations by the Commander-in-Chief. That's the President of the United States, folks. Martial law in the hostile country consists of suspension by the occupying military authority, the criminal and civil law, and of the domestic administration and government in the occupied place or territory, and in the substitution of military rule and force for the same. Military dictatorship, folks, as well as in the dictation. Gee, that sounds like military dictatorship, folks. Of general laws, as far as military necessity requires this suspension, substitution, or dictation. And this is, um, note, under the law martial, only the criminal jurisdiction of a military court is the recognized law. But as Article 3 says, the civil courts can continue wholly or in part as long as the civil jurisdiction does not violate the military orders laid down by the commander-in-chief or one of his commanders. By this means, a military venue jurisdiction and authority are imposed upon the occupied populace under the disguise of the ordinary civil courts and officers of the occupied district or region, because the so-called civil authorities in an occupied district or region only act at the pleasure of a military authority. It should also be noted here that the several state legislatures, county boards of commissioners, and city councils are constantly legislating to please the edicts of the federal government, the occupying force, and that their legislation in this sense is not an exercise of state sovereignty, but instead a compliance with the edicts of the military force which occupies the several states and consequently are edicts under martial law rule. And that's taken from the book called The Non-Ratification of the 14th Amendment by Judge A. H. Ellett to the Utah, Utah Supreme Court uh, associated with the case Diet versus Turner. So, you know, I mean, think about it. That's why they have these military bases all in all the states. They all have military bases, especially the southern states, but they're all states. There's a military base somewhere. Somewhere there's a military base. It's because it's part of the military occupation. Statute equals edict under martial law. Regulation equals edict under martial law. Code equals edict under martial law. Rule equals edict under martial law. Constitution equals edict under martial law. Constitutional amendment equals edict under martial law. It's all edicts under martial law, folks. This is Article 44 of the Libra Code. All wanton violence committed against persons in the invaded country, all destruction of property not commanded by the authorized officer, all robbery, all pillage or sacking, even after taking a place by main force, all rape, wounding, maiming, or killing of such inhabitants are prohibited under the penalty of death or such other severe punishment as may seem adequate for the gravity of the offense. A soldier, officer, or private in the act of committing such violence and disobeying a superior, ordering him to abstain from it, may be lawfully killed on the spot by such superior. Think about it, folks. It's a military occupation. They don't want everybody rising up in rebellion against the occupying power because they can't, they can't keep all that stuff under control if everybody starts fighting them. They want to have the appearance of justice. They want you to think that you have constitutional rights. This is found in Texas Code of Criminal Procedure. No evidence obtained by an officer or other person in violation of any provision of the constitutional laws of the state of Texas or the constitutional laws of the United States shall be admitted in evidence against the accused on the trial of any criminal case. And boy, that sounds really good, doesn't it? Well, listen to this. It is an exception to the provisions of subsection 1 of this article that the evidence was obtained by a law enforcement officer acting in objective good faith reliance upon a warrant issued by a neutral magistrate based on probable cause. Yeah. <laughs> and there's federal stuff that talks about it too. This is Title 2018 U.S. Code Civil Action. 
2707. Defense. A good faith reliance upon a court warrant or order, a grand jury subpoena, a legislative authorization, or a statutory authorization, including a request of a governmental entity under section 2703F of this title, a request of an investigative or law enforcement officer under section 2518.7 of this title, or a good faith determination that section 2511.3 of this title permitted the conduct complained of, is a complete defense to any civil or criminal action brought into this chapter or any other law. Yeah, they don't want their code enforcers to end up in jail. They want them to go out and do it again. It makes good business for their so-called courts. This is all about business, folks. This is business. But that's why you bring up the issue of war crimes. Copies of these documents can be found on my private Yahoo, uh, private group at Yahoo called Administering Your Public Servants for a complete set of YouTube videos with private information shares, a DVD with over 50 searchable law dictionaries and other books and forms. Contact me privately at engineerwin at yahoo.com. Donations to support this work are appreciated. I prefer gold or silver coin, but as an extreme less desirable alternative, I can accept the IOUs, the military script, the Federal Reserve notes, the fake money, the PayPal gifts, the checks, the money orders, etc. Send me an email for particulars. All statutes, codes, rules, regulations, constitutions are edicts under martial law. Every constitutional amendment after 1861 is an edict under martial law. Military necessity is martial law. All Civil War states are under military occupation. Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, Florida, Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana, Arkansas, Texas, Missouri, Tennessee, Kentucky. All the states in the territory conquered in the war with Mexico are under military occupation. Arizona, New Mexico, Utah, Nevada. Dictation equals dictatorship. Military dictatorship. Law enforcement is enforcing the martial law. Think about it. When the southern states walked out of Congress in 1861, they ceased to have a quorum. Under executive authority, that means martial law, Lincoln ordered Congress to reconvene. When the Supreme Court ruled against something Lincoln did, he sent troops to the Supreme Court. And to this day... Rule 45 in the Supreme Court rules says all process of this court issues in the name of the President of the United States. You know, you remember when uh, Obamacare was getting passed, or had been passed, and the lower courts were railing on it saying it was unconstitutional? Remember that? And Obama came out and started railing on the courts, and then all of a sudden the Supreme Court just walked right into line and did what they were told. All statutes, state or federal, passed prior to 1861 are lawful de jure statutes. All statutes, state or federal, passed after 1861 are martial law statutes. Two national governments exist, one to be maintained under the Constitution with all its restrictions, the other to be maintained by Congress outside and independently of that instrument. And Congress is owned and operated by the Roman cult. In 1871, Congress set up a corporation to operate as the government of the District of Columbia. It's an established fact that the United States federal government has been dissolved by the Emergency Banking Act, March 9, 1933, 48 Stat 1, Public Law 89-719, declared by President Roosevelt being bankrupt and insolvent. House Joint Resolution 192, 73rd Congress, in session, June 5th, 1933, joint uh, a resolution to some, suspend the, the gold standard and abrogate the gold clause, dissolve the sovereign authority of the United States and the official capacities of all United States governmental offices, officers, and departments, and is further evidence that the United States federal government exists today in name only. That's the United States Congressional Record, March 17, 1993, Volume 33. And get a load of this. On the same day, March 9, 1933, on the same day, since March 9, 1933, the United States has been in a state of declared national emergency. Under the powers delegated by these statutes, the president may seize property, organize and control the means of production, seize commodities, assign military forces abroad, institute martial law, seize and control all transportation and communication, 
regulate the operation of private enterprise, restrict travel in a plethora of particular ways, control the lives of all American citizens. A majority of the people of the United States have lived all their lives under emergency rule. For 40 years, freedoms and governmental procedures guaranteed by the Constitution have in varying degrees been abridged by laws brought into force by states of national emergency. And that's taken from U.S. Senate Report Number 93-549, dated November 19, 1973. Pentagon Inc. masquerading as private companies. Google, YouTube, Facebook, Amazon. The dissenting opinion asserts that the 14th Amendment is a part of the Constitution of the United States. While that same assertion has been made by the United States Supreme Court, that court has never held that the amendment was legally adopted. I cannot believe that any court in full possession of its faculties could honestly hold that the amendment was properly approved and adopted. It's all martial law. That's why it's all martial law. Everything done after 1861 was done under martial law. All statutes, constitutions, codes, rules, regulations, amendments are for the unconstitutional corporation that was set up in 1871. Two national governments exist, one to be maintained under the Constitution with all its restrictions, the other to be maintained by Congress outside and independently of that instrument. Which one are you mixed up with? Martial law falls under the law of nations. This will work for any country on the planet because it falls under the law of nations. Find out any national emergency, including a bankruptcy, and you'll have proof that your country is operating under martial law. Look at their uniforms. The uniforms are all military uniforms. Martial law extends to property and to persons, whether they are subjects of the enemy or aliens to that government. Subjects or aliens, no one else, does not affect we the people. Why would anyone want to be a low-life scumbag U.S. citizen? If a military police officer is talking to you, then you are a subject and you are the enemy. This is McCullough versus Maryland. Again, this was shortly after the War of Independence. All subjects over which the sovereign power of the state extends are objects of taxation, but those over which it does not extend are exempt from taxation. This proposition may also be pronounced as self-evident. It's obvious. The sovereignty of the state extends to everything which exists by its authority or its permission. Congress shall have power to dispose of and make all needful rules and regulations respecting the other property belonging to the United States. That's Article 4, Section 3, Clause 2. Well, what's property? That's subjects. Subjects are property. They're slaves. This is, this is the same in every country. This is the Canadian Ownership and Control Determination Act. Section 2 definitions in this act owns, owned means subject to the regulations. So if you're subject to the regulations, then you are property. And that's the same thing basically that Article 4, Section 3, Clause 2 says. The term resident and citizen of the United States is distinguished from a citizen of one of the several states in that the former is a special class of citizen created by Congress. The term citizen of the United States is analogous to the term subject in the common law. Civil rights under the 14th Amendment are for federal citizens and not state citizens. Federal citizens, as parents, have no right to the custody of their infant children except subject to the paramount right of the state. If you're a U.S. citizen, you are a slave. It is evident that they have not the political rights which are vested in citizens of the states. They are not constituents of any community which has vested any sovereign power of government. Their position partakes more of the character of subjects than of citizens. They are subject to the laws of the United States, but now have no voice in its management. If they are allowed to make laws, the validity of these laws is derived from the sanction of a government in which they are not represented. Mere citizenship they may have, but the political rights of citizens they cannot enjoy. Martial law chiefly affects the police and the collection of public revenue and taxes, whether imposed by the expelled government or by the invader, and refers mainly to the support and efficiency of the army, its safety, and the safety of its operations. That's Article 10 of the Libra Code. Now you know why they always want you to be safe. Be safe.
Do up your seatbelt. Be safe. We want you safe. Contract. Do you feel like you have no constitutional rights when it comes to income tax? It's because you don't. The Constitution doesn't apply where two parties have a contractual relationship. So that's the question. Where's the contract here? All police are military police. Remember, you're a subject. Okay, you get mixed up. It's a contract. That's how you become a subject, is a contract. All police are military police, FBI military police, city military police, state military police, homeland security military police, county military police. You got to stay out of their contracts. All police are military police, and if they're talking to you, then you are a subject, and you are the enemy. There's the real domestic terrorists. You are the enemy. You are the enemy. They murder people all the time. There's been hundreds, thousands that have been murdered by the police and since 911. Uh, we talked it over, and um, after investigating it ourselves, uh, we decided we're not guilty. You are the enemy. The tyrant, who in order to hold his power, suppresses every superiority, does away with good men, forbids education and light, controls every movement of the citizens, and keeping them under perpetual servitude, wants them to grow accustomed to baseness and cowardice, has his spies everywhere to listen to what is said in meetings, and spreads dissension and calumny among the citizens, and impoverishes them, is obliged to make war in order to keep his subjects occupied, and impose upon them a permanent need of a chief. And that's Aristotle. Now I guarantee you that the Founding Fathers knew about this, and that's the reason they were calling King George a tyrant, because he was a textbook tyrant. And um, Obama was also a textbook tyrant. And um, now Trump is trying to get rid of all this stuff, but he is surrounded by people who are in trying to impose this tyranny. And so uh, Trump is trying to get rid of it, and he's doing everything he can, but we need to support him. I'm writing a book about that, actually. So uh, I hope to have that out in a few months. Government officials wear two hats. They can represent the unconstitutional corporation, or they can represent the lawful de jure government. Because of our own ignorance, which really, Mark Passio says, it's ignorance, which is probably true. We've given them evidence of their slave. They presume we are their slave until we defeat their presumption. Under the international law of warfare, all warfare is under international law, folks. All parties to a cause must appear by nom de guerre because an alien enemy cannot maintain an action during the war in his own name. A mixed war is one which is made on one side by public authority and the other by mere private persons. It's all international law. Article 37 of the Libra Code. The United States acknowledge and protect in hostile countries occupied by them. Religion and morality, strictly private property, the persons of the inhabitants, especially those of women, and on the sacredness of domestic relations, offenses to the contrary shall be rigorously punished. This rule does not interfere with the right of the victorious invader to tax the people or their property, to levy forced loans. Um, and so the forced loans is the issue that I want to talk about here because the forced loans of 1862 and 1863 in the form of legal tender notes were vital forces in the struggle for national supremacy. And that's U.S. Supreme Court Juilliard versus Greenman. Federal Reserve notes are military script. They're legal tender. They're forced loans. They're forcing you, the enemy, to loan the government money. All statutes are martial law statutes. All statutes apply to subjects only. The military police often say, you think our laws don't apply to you? Well, the Libra Code says it all. Do they even teach you to read? The last thing they want to talk about is war crimes. War crimes precipitate revolutions. They want you to think you have constitutional rights. I have exclusive content available on my website. I've got two subscription levels and I accept cryptocurrencies. My basic subscription level is $29.99 a year for the videos only. My uh, platinum subscription level is $49.99 a year for the videos plus unlimited consultations. But, you know, I got to tell you, I'm not a liar. Well, I'm in an attorney. No, I'm in a liar. But I can tell you what I would do under certain circumstances and where to find the forms. 
The only power that these New World Order Satanists have over us is through fraud and deception, and my agenda is to expose it for all of our benefit, but I cannot fight all the battles. I need other people fighting the battles as well. And um, it needs to be on point. And, um, you know, I don't mind helping people, but again, I, you know, uh, it, it gets to be a bit much if I'm babysitting. And so you need to do some homework and you need to do a bunch of research and and it's 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 a journey it's becoming the king is a journey it's not an event i'm currently publishing a video a week and if you want to make us a, a donation or a, buy a subscription as a donation it's a modest donation there's no doubt about it but a whole bunch of people chipping in a little bit and it adds up pretty fast so it's always appreciated anyways some of my exclusive content is the Arlington Private Information Share, my land deed training. The Arlington Private Information Share is nine videos by itself. Land deed training is like two or three estoppel certificates training, foreclosure estoppel certificates training, corporate denial training, toll roads notice and demand training, invoice training, notice of void judgment training, revocation of signature training, third party witness training, federal habeas corpus training, revocation of voter registration training, and I've got several of them for criminal complaint training and, and lawsuit training. I recently filed a lawsuit and um, I filed it in federal court and I basically told the, the judges, it's, it was quite lengthy, quite frankly, because I, I wanted to go through and explain everything that's going on. And I was quite belligerent uh, because I, I called them um, bought and paid for clerks, which they are. I told them, uh, it's, I called it a war crimes complaint. And I said that... Um, that uh, went back to history and showed how the Roman cult was responsible for the War of Independence and uh, and the Civil War and uh, and uh, the Roman cult bar members have infiltrated the government and seized control and they're operating it as their own criminal racketeering enterprise and they're all bought and paid for clerks masquerading as judges they're uh, Roman cult bar members and they're uh, whores selling their just us and so uh, I must have put it in there about 50 times. The horrors, the, the Roman cult bar members slash clerks masquerading as uh, bought and paid for clerks masquerading as judges slash whores selling their just us. Anyways, and, and, um, and I must have put it in there about 50 times. And, and it's, it's, it's really interesting because the more belligerent I get, the nicer they are to me. It's amazing. I think it's because they, they respect that, uh, I mean, equity actually is supposed to help the vigilant. And, uh, and I'm basically telling them that I know your little game. And uh, so because uh, they accepted the case, there was no filing fee. It took them uh, several days before they filed it, which, was, which means to me that the thing went onto somebody's desk and they read it. <laughs> and it's like, you know, about... Uh, 250 pages. The actual text of the lawsuit itself was 130 pages and then there was another 130 pages of attachments because I got police reports and stuff that I attached to it as evidence. Anyways, so so um, because of that my lawsuit training might get changed quite a bit because uh, I told them in there, I said under the Geneva Convention relative to the protection of civilians in the time of war of 1949 the rights that are guaranteed in there cannot be given up and uh, and an article we're going to cover it in here later. But uh, and there's there's that you cannot make regulations that uh, deny me a right to get a remedy. And uh, so therefore, I'm not going to follow your rules. I'm not going to affect service. I'm not taking your orders. I'm not doing anything that you want me to do. It's a war crimes complaint. Here you go. You take it and run with it. And, uh, and then I said, but under the Geneva Convention also, that uh, irrespective of any personal responsibility that any of their code enforcers uh, have, that the corporation's still responsible. And so I said, so you can mail a check to this address. And, uh, and that's it. That's, that's what I did. And so uh, they, uh, so far, they accepted it. There's no filing fee. And uh, they've, uh, there was a magistrate judge that showed up and said that they were going to move it into uh, the Fort Worth uh, district. Uh, because uh, the the cities that I filed the lawsuit against are all in that district too, so I, you know whatever I don't care. I'm not I'm not gonna. I told them uh, I'm not affecting service. I'm not following your rules. I'm not doing anything. Knock yourself out. And so um, we'll see what happens. That's all I can say. I might uh, do some lawsuit training that might be focused around that. 
and uh, so any other training requests depending on what people request although people a lot of stuff they request has already been done um, I've also got some uh, videos on the Northeast Private Information Share. I'm going to be uploading videos periodically, especially the Northeast Private Information Share videos, because um, um, I want to uh, encourage people to stay subscribed and try and give them some value. And so um, I'll be uploading the Northeast Private Information Share videos and um, and uh, and other videos, so that um, they have a reason to stay subscribed. All forms, files, and other instructions are available for free on my two private groups at Yahoo Groups and Google Groups. And all my exclusive content is available on my website, and you can buy a subscription there. All empires are built the same way. You get 50% of the poor to go to war and kill the other 50% of the poor, leaving the rich to chit-chat in the Senate. It gives them the impression that there's real democracy. You absorb the land and riches of your enemies and repeat whenever you need cash or new resources. Yep. War is terrorism on a bigger budget. Democracy, fake laws, false arrest, feel free. This is uh, Geneva Convention. No contract agreement or regulation shall impair the right of any worker, whether voluntary or not, wherever he may be, to apply to the representatives of the protecting power in order to request the said power's intervention. So they have to give me a remedy. And I'm not going to follow their rules. I don't have to pay their extortion. I don't have to take their orders. I don't have to do nothing. Well, do anything. <laughs> and um, and this is another part of Article 52. It says all measures aiming at creating unemployment or restricting opportunities offered to workers in an occupied territory in order to induce them through the walk, uh, to work for the occupying power are prohibited. So they can't compel me to work for the occupying power. And that means a social security number. Um, this is Title V, United States Code, Section 552AA13. The term federal personnel means officers, employees of the government of the United States, members of the uniformed services, including members of the reserve components, and individuals entitled to receive immediate or deferred retirement benefits under any retirement program of the government of the United States, including survivor benefits. That means anybody with a Social Security number is federal personnel. If they compel the disclosure of a social security number, they're compelling you to work for the occupying power. Filing fees are re regulation. That's an edict under martial law. Court rules are regulation. By turning on their emergency lights, they're terrorizing you. That's another war crime. Coercing information from you or third parties, a war crime. When they coerce a date of birth from you, they're compelling you to work for the occupying power, a war crime. When they use the regulations to deny you justice, it's a war crime. And I think what I'm going to do is I'll probably bring, uh, I'll, I'll wait and see what happens with this, and then I'll, I'll, I'll probably appeal it anyways, it's just a matter of course, and, uh, and take it to the UN uh, Human Rights Commission, because, uh, because they're involved in war crimes. Protected persons are entitled in all circumstances to respect for their persons, their honor, their family rights, their religious convictions and practices, and their manners and customs. Without prejudice to the provisions related to the state of health, age, and sex, all protected persons shall be treated with the same consideration by the party to the conflict whose power they are, without any adverse distinction based on particular on race, religion, or political opinion. So they're taking reprisals against you for your political opinion, or they're subjecting you to their satanic religious ceremony. Those are war crimes. And when they stop you because you don't have plates in your vehicle that are not state plates, they're persecuting you for your political opinion. When they drag you into their kangaroo court, they're subjecting you to their satanic religious ceremony. Whoever, in any of the circumstances referred to in subsection B, you know, these liars that put this stuff together. Anyways. Whoever, in any of the circumstances referred to in subsection B of this section, intentionally obstructs by force or threat of force any person in the enjoyment of that person's free exercise of religious beliefs or attempts to do so, shall be punished as provided in subsection D. Okay, so subsection B is the circumstances referred to in subsection A that are the offense is in or affects interstate or foreign commerce. So think about it. You have U.S. citizens that are operating their little criminal racketeering enterprise called City of Colleyville, and they're dragging you into their so-called court, which is a satanic religious ceremony. And so that's, that's, that's foreign. 
Okay, so then it's by it's by definition interstate commerce or foreign commerce. Either one of them, they call it whatever they want. And I've actually heard of people that have gone in there and say, I don't wish to participate in your uh, religious ceremony. Get him out of here. You know, serious. Or, or they'll say, how do you plea? And you say, how do I pray? I, I pray, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Get him out of here. I'm serious as a heart attack. You don't want to be in their so-called courts? Then that's, it's, that's the answer right there. That's one way. Yet still it was found difficult to set bounds to ecclesiastical ingenuity. Okay, this is all the Roman cult, folks. U.S. citizen equals Roman cult equals Roman law. For when they were driven out of all their former holes, they devised a new method of conveyance by which the lands were granted not to themselves directly, but to nominal fiafis to the use of the religious houses, thus distinguishing between the possession and the use and receiving the actual profits while the season of the land remained in the nominal fiafi, who was held by the courts of equity, then under the direction of the Roman cult, to be bound in conscience to account to assess the use of the rents and emoluments of the estate. That's taxes, and they're still under the direction of the Roman cult. And it is to these inventions that our practitioners are indebted for the introduction of uses and trusts, the foundation of modern conveyancing. And it's still the foundation of modern conveyancing. And that's Tomlin's Law Dictionary, 1835 edition, volume 2, under the definition of Mortmain. My contact information, my blog is SovereigntyInternational.wordpress.com, my website is SovereigntyInternational.fyi, my email address is EngineerWin at Yahoo.com, my YouTube profile Sovereign Living, my Facebook community page, I deleted it, my private group on Facebook, you know, I haven't been there in months, I'm not interested in going there, they're just doing all sorts of things to collect information and use it against you, why on earth would you go there? I have friends of mine that are there that don't mind going there, and so they're uh, managing it for me, and I'm okay with that. Um, I'm, I'm basically want nothing. They're just nothing but thieves and pirates. I'd like to sue them if I could find a judge that wants to be a judge instead of a bought and paid for a clerk. You know, once, once, well, depending on what happens with this case, you know, I might, I'm, I, I've got a lot of issues that I want to bring. Anyways. My Yahoo private group is called Administering Your Public Servants. My Google private group is called Administering Your Public Servants. Follow me on Twitter at Engineer Win. Follow me on Steemit at Sovereignty International. And I've got a BitChu profile, but they limit you as to the size of video you can upload. So, you know, some of my videos are over a gig, and I can't upload them. So, you know, you can see some of my videos there, but certainly not all of them. This is Article A to the Geneva Convention relative to the treatment of civilians in the time of war of 1949. Protected persons may in no circumstance renounce in part or in entirety the rights secured to them by the present convention. So your rights cannot be renounced. You know, if you um, get drug into one of their so-called courts and, and you get convicted and you have a liar, or even you yourself, um, you know, when the courts of appeal, uh, you bring up issues that are appealable, it has to be on the record, okay? They're going to be looking for stuff that's where you objected to something and they just uh, ignored it and went ahead and railroaded you anyways. That's the only stuff they'll see in the courts of appeals. And so what my point is, is that if you don't object, then they view that you agree to it. Okay, that's the way they view. But that's the nice thing about the Geneva Convention is you cannot renounce in part or entirety the rights secured to you that are in the Geneva Convention. So you can bring up, so I plan on getting some a friend of mine actually out of jail if some other things we're doing doesn't work. Uh, he's well past his appeal period. He's been in there eight years. And so um, I plan on, I'm going to work on getting his butt out of jail. And um, so we'll see what happens. The party to the conflict in whose hands protected persons may be is responsible for the treatment accorded to them by its agents, irrespective of any individual responsibility which may be incurred. So that's the first thing they want to do. Remember, we talked about good faith, and if those pigs can claim good faith, then, um, then they're going to be able to get away with it. But the bottom line is their criminal corporation is still responsible. And so I bring all this stuff up, and I tell them uh, that I'm not following your rules, I'm not taking your orders, I'm not affecting service, but you can mail a check here. 
And that's why, right there. Terrorism is a system of government that seeks to rule by intimidation. Can you spot the terrorists? I can see a whole bunch of them. Terrorism is a noun, use of violence and intimidation in pursuit of political aims. So you, you got war crimes, you build a case. Remember, all government employees, it's the Roman cult. That's what this video is about. All government employees, it's the Roman cult. Now, if they want to honor their oath of office, that's great. But don't count on it. They might. And if they do, that's great. But you can't count on it. So you got to build a case. you got to get a police report. You get copies of any videos. You get any notes. It's amazing what kind of evidence they'll give you against them. All of the statutory citations that we're going to be talking about now are taken from Can Catman's material, almost all of them. Catman has done a huge amount of research, and I highly recommend that everybody in Texas should get his book. His email address is catman1 at gmail.com. I guess I don't have that here, do I? Anyways, this is a copy of the police report that I got from Colleyville. That's the pigs that assaulted me. And um, or this is the request for the police report. Uh, and and again, you know, they sit there and play stupid, and so you have to specifically say what you want. And in fact, they they, they actually list it there. Uh, see here, they have tapes, citation, video, offense, incident reports, narrative, call logs, arrest reports, etc. And so you got to list it all. And so all reports, all videos, all offense reports, all incident reports, all narratives, all call logs, all arrest reports, all photos, all criminal complaints, all bonds and oaths of office for all officers involved. Check out my other videos, Bankster Thieves Playlist, Roman Cult Playlist, Bankrupt Corps for So-Called Governments, Bar Members 1 through 4, Do It Yourself How Not to Volunteer for the Selective Service in the Draft, Martial Law is Here, Do It Yourself No Income Tax, Do It Yourself Free Mail, Do It Yourself Kangaroo Courts 1 through 15, and the Canada Border Pigs playlist and bar members and their satanic connections playlist. Uh, this is Article 71 of the Geneva Convention. No sentence shall be pronounced by the competent courts of the occupying power except after a regular trial. In other words, you're entitled to due process. And if it's a bought and paid for clerk masquerading as a judge, then that's not due process. And it's not a competent court. Okay? So it's got to be a competent court. And so. Uh, it's a fundamental right of a party to have a neutral and detached judge preside over judicial proceedings. Oh, look at that. This is the standing army you were told not to tolerate. Warning. That's all military uniforms, okay? That's Roman cult. Those are all agents of the Roman cult. That's exactly what they are. Those are all military uniforms. Order followers, the servants of evil. You assist an evil system most effectively by obeying its orders and decrees. An evil system never deserves such allegiance. Allegiance to it means partaking of the evil. A good person will resist of an evil an evil system with his or her whole soul. So I guess the question is, are you good or not? Something to think about. Order followers are the ones that keep the system of slavery in place. And that's well said Mark Passio. Highly recommend Mark Passio's YouTube channel. It's called What on Earth is Happening? Change will not come if we wait for some other person or some other time. We are the ones we've been waiting for. We are the change that we seek. Give me liberty or give me death was a statement that Patrick Henry made after witnessing a man flogged to death for refusing to take a license. They're assaulting people with their Roman cult Sestike Trust is what they were doing. And this is Chisholm versus Georgia, which was shortly after the... the the War of Independence, like in 1794. In doing this, I shall have occasion, incidentally, to events how true it is that states and governments were made for man, and at the same time how true it is that his creatures and servants have first deceived, next vilified, and at last oppressed their master and maker. A state like a merchant makes a contract. A dishonest state like a dishonest merchant woefully refuses to discharge it. They're nothing but thieves. Government is not reason. It is not eloquence. It is force. These people are Satanists. They're order followers. They're doing what they're told. And that's it. They're brain-dead idiots. Like fire, it's a dangerous servant and a fearful master. 
There are two ways to conquer and enslave a nation. One is by sword and the other is by debt. How can you tell when they're lying? You're of your father the devil, and the lust of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he's a liar and the father of it. When their lips are moving, they're lying. That's how you can tell. They're Satanists. And you have no business in their so-called court. And because it brings into action and enforces this great and glorious principle that the people are the sovereign of this country, and consequently that fellow citizens and joint sovereigns cannot be degraded by appearing with each other in their own courts to have their controversies determined. You have no business being in their so-called court. And this is Texas Penal Code, uh, bail jumping failure to appear. Uh, an offense under this section is a Class C misdemeanor if the offense for which the actor's appearance is required is punishable by fine only, okay? So these are minor traffic offenses, speeding, going through a red light, that kind of stuff. Um, now, uh, if you, like, do dangerous driving, which I'm not sure what that would, what would be called dangerous driving in some states, going over 80 miles an hour is dangerous driving. So, you know, again, I don't know. But, um, um... I think dangerous driving is 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 uh, an actual crime, even in Texas. But uh, in Texas, anything that's a Class C misdemeanor is not a crime. Conviction of a Class C misdemeanor does not impose any legal disability or disadvantage. And uh, and an individual judged guilty of a Class C misdemeanor shall be punished by fine only, not to exceed five hundred bucks. And that's Texas Penal Code, um, and that's Class C misdemeanors. A county attorney will represent the state in all cases, and they never have a county attorney representing the state. An offense under this section is a Class C misdemeanor if the offense for which the actor's appearance is required is punishable by fine only. That's Texas Penal Code. And a crime means a misdemeanor punishable by jail or a felony, okay? So it's not a crime. And if there's no crime, then it's false arrest and there's no probable cause. Probable cause requires a crime. Uh, a defendant means a person accused of crime. If there's no crime, you're not a defendant. So then you're calling me a defendant? So then this is, this is official oppression is what we're doing here today, is it? A municipal court um, shall have exclusive original jurisdiction within the territorial limits of the municipality in all criminal cases. If it's not a crime, it's not a criminal case. A defendant, so that means it's a civil case. A defendant equals crime equals jail or felony. Again, this is uh, the Texas government code. A municipal court has jurisdiction in all criminal cases. Persons dealing with the government are charged with knowing government statutes and regulations, and they assume the risk that government agents may exceed their authority and provide misinformation. Again, do you know who you are? Right? That's why they impose martial law, folks is because what they do is it's a martial law is really no law that's why they have to pass statutes for common law crimes like murder and assault that's because it's under martial law there's no law and so they then they what they proceed to do is pass literally millions of codes rules and regulations and if you don't know some obscure code rule or regulation they're gonna walk all over you they'll sell you into slavery they'll do it in a heartbeat Okay, these people are Satanists. This is Satanism is what it is. And the sooner we figure it out, we got to put a stop to it, folks. Trump is trying to put a stop to it. I believe he is. And so we need to put a stop to it. We need to come out and help him. And, and we need to let him know that we want to put a stop to it, too. Um, all persons in the United States are chargeable with knowledge of the statutes at large. It is well established that anyone who deals with government assumes the risk that the agent acting in the government's behalf has exceeded the bounds of his authority. The revenue laws are a code or system of regulation of tax assessment and collection. They relate to taxpayers and not to non-taxpayers. There is such a thing as a non-taxpayer, that's true. The latter are without their scope. No procedures are prescribed for non-taxpayers and no attempt is made to annul any of their rights and remedies in due course of law. 
With them, Congress does not assume to deal, and they are neither the subject nor the object of the revenue loss. So, there you go. <laughs> if you get mixed up in that stuff, then, then that's because you volunteered in. It's a contract. And again, a military uniform is the Roman cult. And, uh, but that's only one example of the Roman cult. Any government official is the Roman cult. Now, many of them have oaths of office, but some of them don't. And you have to understand that. And, um, and so you have to be aggressive. And that's why I do what I do, okay? Because, you know, I have sent out literally hundreds, thousands of my notice and demands to government officials and basically put them in their place. The wearing of clerical dress or religious habit on the part of the lay folk is the same as a penalty, is liable to the same penalty on the part of the state as a misuse of military uniform. So, again, military uniform is Roman cult. Think about it. It's exactly what it is. Anyways, all government officials are Roman cult. That's exactly what's going on, folks. The Roman cult is bankrupt. It's owned, I should say, the government's bankrupt. It's owned and operated by the Roman cult. I've had all sorts of stuff about that in other videos. I didn't put it in this video because I had some other stuff I wanted to cover, and I wanted to keep it reasonably short. I could make this thing a mile long, and I'm sure you would fall asleep. Anyways, so... Um, the, the government is owned and operated by the Roman cult. Any government official is working for the Roman cult. That's who they're working for. Have a great day. Thanks for watching.